Hi, I'm Sean Vassar with Spartan Controls. In this video, we'll be going over the key configuration points for a Rosemount 5300 series guided wave radar. Of course, we can't go through every application, but by the end of this video, you should have a good grasp on top level and interface applications. Before configuration can begin, it is important to gather the following information. Reference tank height, hold off distance, probe length, still pipe or column diameter, upper product composition, if measuring interface, and scaling for your 4 to 20 output to the host. Reference tank height. This is the distance from the flange our transmitter is mounted on to the zero reference on the tank. This is the most critical measurement you make as this is the zero reference point from which our outputs will be referenced. Hold off distance or upper null zone is the area at the top of the tank the radar transmitter is configured to ignore. As a rule of thumb, guided wave radars cannot make a reliable measurement in the first 6 inches away from the flange. For this reason, it is advisable that a null zone of at least 6 inches be configured. In nozzle installations, it is suggested that the null zone be configured for at least the nozzle's length to ignore any noise that may appear in the nozzle. On bridle installations, the null zone should be at least the distance from the transmitter flange to the top process tap. Probe length is measured from the factory but should be verified and noted before installation. On a rigid probe, the measurement is made from the bottom of our flange to the tip of the probe. On a flexible probe, the measurement is made from our flange to the top of the weight. Column or pipe diameter is the approximate inner diameter of the still pipe or column the antenna is to be mounted in. If this is an interface measurement application, note what the upper product will be as this will affect the measurement. The last thing we want to note is the scaling values we want to be using for our 4 to 20 milliamp analog output signal. If you are unsure on these, it would be best to talk to the operation staff or the programmer that looks after the host PLC, DCS, or RTU on site. While the 5300 series radar can be configured with a hard communicator, the Rosemount Radar Master software offers a far superior interface and added diagnostics. Radar Master is a free software available on the Emerson website. We've included a link in the video description. To establish a connection with a device in the field, you will require an interface modem. The transmitter we are using in this demo is hard enabled, so we will use a USB Hart Bell 202 modem. Spark Controls offers both USB and serial modems for any protocol you may require. As with any hard-enabled device, you can connect at any point on the two-wire trunk, provided there is at least 230 ohms of loop resistance. If you are not sure whether or not you have enough resistance, it is good practice to temporarily install a 250 ohm resistor in series and clip your heart leads on either side of the resistor. When you first open the Rosemount Radar Master software, you should find that the search device window is open. If it is not, you can simply click in the top left corner on the magnifying glass, and it will pull up the search device window. If you're having issues finding a device, click on Settings, make sure that Enable Heart Communications is checked, and that the USB heart interface you're using is selected under the port. If you're still having issues, you can click Default and set all the protocol settings back to default factory settings. Click OK, and start a scan. In this case, we found our device at address 0, and we'll click Yes to connect to it. Whenever you've connected to a device for the first time, it's always a good idea to save an as-found configuration. To do that, click on Device in the top left corner, select Backup Config to File, give the backup a name that you'll remember, and make sure it's saved somewhere that you can recall later. Click Save, and the file will be backed up. Now that we've saved an as-found backup, we can begin configuring the device. First, click on the Run Wizard for Guided Setup button, on the first screen, you'll find the device model number and serial number. Click Next. Then you can configure a tag into the device if required. On this screen, we can configure the units used in the device for geometry configuration. For the purposes of this example, all we really care about is the length unit. I've chosen feet. Click Next. Here we can configure the type of probe that the transmitter is connected to. This should be configured from factory. If you're unsure, Please reference the model number on the transmitter and check it against the product data sheet. If you change any of these selections, the picture to the right will update and give you a reference as to how to measure the probe length. In this case, we're using a flexible single and the probe length is always measured from the bottom of the flange to the top of the weight. Here we can configure the tank height. Tank height is always measured from the bottom of the flange to the bottom of the tank, or what you're calling zero in the tank. And you also configure the mounting type. For this example, I will use a nozzle style. Again, on this screen, if you change the mounting type, the picture will update to give you a reference. 
It's important that you also configure the nozzle diameter and the nozzle height. Here we configure the measurement mode. For this example, I will use product level and interface level. When doing an interface application, it's very important that you program in the upper product dielectric constant. For most refined oils, it will be about two. If you're unsure for your product, just click on this button, the dielectric constant chart, and it'll give you a list of different products to choose from. Here, we can choose to configure volume calculation method. In some cases, you'd rather output volume than level. Uh, that's not typical in this example, we'll select none. And lastly, you need to configure the analog output range. So in this case, we've got a total tank height of five feet, including a five, uh, a half a foot nozzle off the top of the tank. So logically, it would make sense to have the analog output scaled for the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank before it enters the nozzle. So in that case, I, uh, in this case, I chose 4.5 feet as my 100% uh, upper range value. Click Finish. Now that we've ran through the wizard, most of the key configuration parameters are taken care of, but there are a few more things we'd like to check. Um, we'll, we'll next go into device specific setup. We want to make sure that we select the right tank material. In this case, we'll go with metallic. And if the tank is empty or if there's no product touching the probe, you can do a trim near zone. Hit OK. Next, we're going to go into the tank configuration. We'll start at the probe tab, and we want to make sure that we configure our hold off distance. The hold off distance is the area at the top of the tank that we know we'll never get product in, so we want to make sure that we ignore it completely. In this case, I know that the nozzle was about half a foot long, so we'll make sure we set the hold off distance to half a foot. It's important to note that you can't actually measure uh, in the first half a foot uh, from, from the flange anyway, so it's always a good idea to have an upper nozzle or hold off distance of at least half a foot. Next, we'll go to the geometry tab. In the advanced section, we want to make sure show level below probe end is zero is checked. Next, we'll go to the environment tab, click the advanced button, and we want to make sure that the vapor dielectric constant is set to one. Virtually all applications will have a vapor dielectric constant of one, if you're unsure, please call Spartan to consult. We then click store to save all our changes and close. Now that we have all the main configuration parameters stored, we wanna make sure we go into tools and do a restart. Next, we'll wanna open an echo curve. So in the bottom left side of the screen, click the echo curve button. It'll take a few moments to load an echo curve. The echo curve is a visual representation of what you'll see uh, kind of inside the vessel. We won't get into too much detail about the filtering and, and how to read these in this video. We'll have another video on troubleshooting. So in this case, we have an empty tank. If you have an opportunity to load an echo curve with an empty tank, it's always a good idea to perform the learn function, uh, which is in the bottom right hand corner here. Just click the learn button. We'll ask if the tank is empty or filled. In this case, it's empty. Hit OK. Once the learn function is complete, you'll find that your blue and possibly your purple line here will have moved. That's completely normal. It's just uh, adjusting the, the thresholds to help null out any noise that's in the vessel. Whenever you're able to load an echo curve when the tank is empty, it's always a good idea to save an as found plot. Um, so if we have any issues in, in the future, you can send us a copy uh, and we can read through and just see if there's any um, obstructions or any noise in the tank that needs to be filtered out. To do that, go to the view record mode tab, click the little red record button in the bottom left corner, select save current snapshot to file. You can click browse and uh, navigate to a file path that you'll recall later. This is where the file will be saved and click OK. At this point, we've now saved everything that's visible on the echo curve currently to that file. Now that we saved an echo curve with the tank empty, it's a good idea to introduce product into the tank and load and save another echo curve. Go to configuration mode, click read, click only update echo curve slash peaks. This will make the echo curve load faster and hit okay. 
Once the echo curve is loaded with product in the vessel, you should clearly see your P1 service and interface peaks identified. Uh, if they are not tracking or, or things don't look quite right, you should save an echo curve uh, so that you can send it into us for support. Regardless, when we're done, we should always save an as left or with product echo curve. So again, to the view record mode and click the little red circle in the bottom left corner to save. We'll select save current snapshot to file and click OK. If at commissioning it's not possible to see the tank empty, you can manually configure your filter settings or your threshold settings by going to the configuration mode. The blue horizontal line is the threshold uh, for your top surface. So that is to say the peak uh, of your top surface has to exceed the blue line to be identified as the surface echo. So to set the blue line at a set threshold, um, the general rule of thumb is to set it to about a third to half the amplitude of the surface peak. So in this case, the P1 surface peak is at about 3000 millivolts. So we would set it at about 1500 millivolts. To do that, click on the set threshold button in the bottom right corner. We're gonna set it to 1500 millivolts, click OK. It'll apply the change and reload the echo curve. So now our threshold is set for the surface at about half the amplitude of the surface peak. The same rule of thumb applies for the interface threshold, which is the purple line. So the same applies uh, for the purple line to identify an interface. Um, we're looking for a peak after the surface peak that exceeds the purple line in amplitude. So here we see a peak further down the tank at about 4,500 millivolts. So we would set the purple line to about half its amplitude. So we'll go for about 2100 millivolts. So we can just drag it down using this node on the right. When the area in the back of the plot is turned yellow, that means there's an unsaved change. So we want to click store to apply it. Click yes. Now that we've made a manual change to the echo curve settings, it's always a good idea to save another snapshot of the echo curve. So back to the view record mode tab, click the, the red circle in the bottom left corner, select save current snapshot to file, and click OK. And the last thing we'll want to do is save a backup and as left backup. So in the top left corner, click device, select backup config to file, Give the file name something you'll recall later. And save it. Thank you for watching. Please check the description for any related materials. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us.